I've been a fan of Tandy computers pretty much my entire life. The first PC I used at home when I was a kid was a Tandy 1000, and I've enjoyed using them ever since, especially due to their superior sound and graphics capabilities compared to other PCs of the mid to late 1980s. But in the early 1990s, they really started to fall behind the competition. The computer I have here is the Tandy 1000 RLX, which was introduced in June 1991. It was the first Tandy 1000 to have VGA graphics. The more powerful RLX system is the perfect home office machine. And with hard drive, it's just $11.99.95. The Tandy 1000 family of computers. So easy to use, we guarantee success. And it was also the second to last Tandy 1000 ever. And I think part of its downfall might not have been the computer itself, but rather the monitor it was equipped with. That monitor formed a lasting memory with me based on my brief experience of seeing it demonstrated at a Radio Shack store about 30 years ago, and not in a good way. It was their VGM-220 monitor, or in this case the VGM-225, which is the same thing except equipped with a tilt-swivel base, whereas the VGM-220 did not come with that. Their catalog listing for it said get VGA quality at an affordable price. Displays super clear 640x480 graphics in 0.52mm dot pitch. And they also said the remarkable clarity of its 14-inch display is comparable to monitors costing much more. And both of those statements are complete lies. And I'm finally calling them out on it 30 years later. To be fair, if you bought the Tandy 1000 RLX during Radio Shack's holiday sale, you got the monitor for free. So maybe you're going to say, I shouldn't complain about a free monitor, but I'm going to do it anyway. If we look at the sticker on the back, this one was custom manufactured in Korea for Radio Shack in March 1992. And if you look up the FCC ID that's listed on it, it reveals the manufacturer of this monitor is Samsung. At first glance, it looks like a perfectly normal early 1990s 14-inch VGA color monitor, the same kind that many computers came equipped with at the time. But if you have the chance to see one of these monitors in person, like I did at a Radio Shack store 30 years ago, the first thing that will strike you is how grainy the image is. And that's due to that 052 millimeter dot pitch which Radio Shack advertised. The dot pitch of a color CRT monitor is a measurement of the gap between each pixel on the face of the CRT. The smaller the dot pitch, the more finely spaced those pixels are and the more detailed of an image that the monitor is capable of displaying. I wanted to figure out the real resolution that this Tandy VGM225 monitor is actually physically capable of displaying. So I first measured the height and width of its viewable image size because I'm not counting the border area and that turned out to be a width of 24.2 centimeters and a height of 17 centimeters. I then took a close-up high resolution photo of a tape measure against the monitor so I can count exactly how many pixels per centimeter it is actually displaying. Playing. Each pixel actually consists of a group of red, green, and blue dots, which is how color CRTs work. And I counted 20 pixels per centimeter horizontal and 25 pixels per centimeter vertical. So if you do the math, that's 24.2 centimeters horizontal viewable image size times 20 pixels per centimeter. That's 484 pixels horizontal. And then it's 17 centimeters viewable image size vertical times 25 pixels per centimeter vertical. That's 425 pixels actual resolution vertical. So the maximum resolution that this monitor is actually capable of displaying, regardless of what resolution the video card is throwing at it, is 484 by 425. So Radio Shack's claim of this monitor being able to display super clear 640 by 480 graphics is a total lie because it's physically incapable of displaying that resolution. It's actually only showing about 75% of the resolution that the computer is attempting to display. So at a 0.52 millimeter dot pitch, the dot pitch would need to be 75% of 0.52 millimeter, and that just so happens to work out to 0.39 millimeter, which was another very common dot pitch of standard VGA monitors in the early 1990s. So any VGA monitor with a screen size similar to this one which has a dot pitch larger than 0.39 millimeter is not actually displaying full VGA resolution. Print neatly.
but manufacturing CRTs with a lower dot pitch is expensive. So in order to satisfy the demand for lower cost VGA monitors in the early 1990s, some OEMs like Samsung decided to scrimp by equipping them with higher dot pitch picture tubes, often the same ones they had previously been using in lower resolution CGA monitors. This problem of many computer monitors not having a dot pitch good enough to accurately display their rated resolution was a trend noted by InfoWorld magazine in July 1991. They said if you don't have enough dot pitch, it'll look like you're looking through a screen door and that users who purchase them will be disappointed to discover that the dot pitch of the monitor severely reduces image quality. And that's exactly what the problem is with this monitor. So I came across one of these on eBay recently and I admit admittedly paid way too much for it just to learn that my memory was correct. It really is that bad. And I'm going to try to give you some examples of it in this video. But first just a warning that trying to record the image of a CRT monitor on video is a notoriously difficult thing to do. Is a notoriously difficult thing to do. Even if you can match up the refresh rate so you don't get any visible flicker, you're almost guaranteed to get moray patterns and other visual anomalies which are not actually visible in real life. So I'll try my best to give you both full screen and close up shots and try to point out to you what is actually visible in real life on this monitor so you can get a good assessment of its picture quality or lack thereof. So here I go starting up the Tandy 1000 RLX with the VGM 225 monitor. There goes booting DOS. And you may see some flickering on the camera. That's because text mode on VGA runs at 70 hertz refresh rate, which does not match the 60 hertz field rate of the camera. But there's a program I discovered to fix that. It's called VGA 240. And you type slash install and it switches the frame rate to 60 hertz so now it matches the camera. The only downside is as it says it takes up 17k of RAM so you may not want to have it permanently installed due to that memory usage. Here's an example some plain text as you would typically see in DOS applications and you can see the ease especially in this bright color the top part of the E is almost completely closed up so that it just it just blurs together. So that's an example of how grainy the text is on this monitor. And a large part of that is due to the type of font it uses for the regular DOS text mode. Because here I loaded a custom font that's more blocky and it's quite a bit more legible. I mean you can make out that top part of the E a lot easier than with the standard font. So this would have been a better choice if they had this as the default text font for the built-in VGA graphics of this computer instead of what it came with. But what Tandy really wanted you to use on this computer instead of DOS is Deskmate. So let's get into that. Welcome to Deskmate. For help at any time, press the key labeled F1. That's an example of the digital audio capability of the Tandy sound chip in this computer. Let's try out this home organizer program. Now I'll give it one thing, the colors are very vibrant on this monitor. Especially the yellow and red and green, they really stand out. But otherwise, my memory is correct of when I was a kid and seeing one of these monitors in use at a Radio Shack store. Right away I could see how grainy the image is and I'm definitely seeing that now. Here's a close up to show what I mean. At the end of each line in this word processor, it uses a symbol that is three horizontal lines on top of each other. Sort of like what today would be called the hamburger menu symbol. And on this monitor, it's just a blob. You cannot make out the separation between those three horizontal lines. It just completely blends together. And some other symbols like an asterisk. It's just a blob. You cannot make out the fine details of you know the little points on the star. Down here at the bottom of the screen it seems to be even worse because if I type a bunch of double quotation marks you can see on some of them it blurs together the quote marks so that you can't even really tell the gap between the two vertical lines. 
So yeah, it really is that grainy when you're trying to read text on this monitor. And maybe you can tell there's a slight barrel distortion to the image where the sides bulge out. But that may have been like that since this monitor was new because I saw a Radio Shack commercial from 1991 where they show a similar monitor and it had the opposite problem called pincushion distortion where the sides are pushed in. So that's probably just how these monitors were when they are brand new. And that's still how it is today, 30 years later. Here's another close-up example from the top of the screen. And I can make out Reward Lost Dog, but I absolutely cannot make out what it's saying here if that's even supposed to be anything legible. It's just completely blurred together. So uh, if it's trying to say something, I can't read it. But for most games, it's perfectly fine. For example, King's Quest II from Sierra, a very classic DOS game that was popular on the Tandy 1000. You can hear that three voice Tandy sound and it runs at a very low resolution compared to what VGA is capable of. So, you can still see every pixel on the screen just fine, even with this coarse dot pitch. Here's a newer Sierra game which takes full advantage of the VGA 256 color palette. You can see the nice gradient on the, Mike, on the Monkey Island logo and on the clouds in the background. You can hear that Tandy three voice sound again. That 256 color palette really shines on a game like this. And that's the main advantage of a VGA system for these games compared to the older Tandy 1000s which only had 16 colors. So for most DOS games from the early 90s when this monitor was new, it would have been perfectly adequate. But for games which run at the EGA resolution of 640x350, the legibility on this monitor really depends on how the graphics are designed and how big the text is on the screen. For example, this Blockout game, it uses fairly large text, so it's still perfectly legible, even at this higher resolution. But for a game like Microsoft Flight Simulator version 4, which is also running in EGA resolution of 640x350. It has a lot of finer detail that is really difficult to make out on this monitor. For example, on the instruments where it says autopilot oft in very small text, it's almost illegible on this monitor. Now I'm loading Windows 3.1 and like I said, the colors are very vibrant on this monitor. But once you actually get into Windows, it's not such an enjoyable experience, not only because it doesn't run that quickly on a 286, especially if only one megabyte of RAM, but also because the 640 by 480 resolution exceeds the capability of the monitor to resolve each pixel. So that fine text in each program group is really quite difficult to read. And here's a document in the right word processor in Windows. And again, it's difficult to read the text. And this discoloration here is visible in real life. It's not just a camera effect. I think it just needs a better degaussing of the picture tube. And just about the only thing I could actually tolerate using on a computer like this with this monitor is a game of solitaire. Not only because it doesn't require that much CPU power to run, but also because everybody knows what a deck of cards looks like. So it's not too difficult to make them out. And Tandy was not the only one to sell one of these VGA monitors with a CGA quality picture tube in it. You can see this ad from April 1992 of a KLH 386SX computer, which came with a 14 inch VGA color monitor with 0.52 dot pitch. And also Packard Bell sold a 14 inch VGA color monitor with a 0.52 dot pitch. That was their PB8552VG monitor. And I do find it curious that when PC Magazine reviewed the Tandy 1000 RLX in their December 1991 issue, 
Tandy gave them the much higher quality VGM 300 monitor instead of the standard VGM 220 monitor with that horrible dot pitch. I think they were definitely afraid of getting a very bad review if they had sent PC Magazine this monitor with that very grainy image. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but I think this monitor may have been part of Tandy's downfall as a computer company. Because like I did 30 years ago, people would have taken one look at its very grainy, poor quality image and they would have thought, wow, that's a terrible monitor. I'm not buying that computer. And they'd go somewhere else and buy a computer with a higher quality monitor, even if it did cost them a little bit more. Tanti did continue to sell PCs for a couple more years, especially their Sensation series of multimedia PCs. But by the mid-1990s, they sold their computer business to AST, and the last few Tandy PCs were really just rebadged AST machines. I hate to have such a negative opinion of it, especially given my fondness for the Tandy line of computers, but I have to call them like I see them, and just like I saw 30 years ago, this VGM 225 is a very grainy monitor. You know, Frankie, I don't get this ad. GWM seeks roommate. What does GWM mean anyway? Well, this is a pretty nice building. I'm thinking it means guy with money.